Hey, my name is Mike Yakovlev and I've been making cover artwork for like 10 years. I'm gonna show you how I use 3D to help a lot of my 2D artworks. Let's jump into it. So like a couple years ago, I was asked to create this cover artwork for Pilot. There's this upcoming release called Brawl. <laughs> And I'm going to just show you my process from sketch to 3D and then back to 2D. So I started with the sketch in Photoshop and this is what the original sketch looks like. You know, there was a couple things that the client wanted, like he wanted the main character in the middle. He wanted like a spotlight coming down from the top. So this, this very like center focused composition. That was it. You know, get the character in the middle, have the spotlight and then just have these baddies with this logo on their jacket. And then the rest of the environment is just kind of generic, like warehouse dock looking area it's not, nothing really specific so this is what i sent him and he liked it so then after that i knew that there's a lot of characters there's this kind of like perspective thing there's a lot of dimensionality to the artwork and i figured i think doing this in 3d would help me a lot and this is what i kind of recommend using 3d for if you have like these complex environments or perspectives or foreshortening all of these things that are generally hard to draw like anatomy very dynamic camera angles and these complex scenes with a lot of figures and lighting and all this kind of stuff that stuff's hard to draw and hard to paint and especially get it accurate so i recommend just jumping into blender or something that's free and setting up a very rough scene. So I'm gonna go into Blender and I'm gonna show you what I did and how I set up this exact sketch in 3D. So here we are in Blender. And in Blender, I have the sketch here opened up in a window for reference. The left, you can kind of see the angle of how I have everything positioned. So I just matched the bad guys up to the same position and the person in the middle, the character, and then the same characters in the background as the bad guys. And then here on the right side of the screen, you can see kind of like the actual scene setup. And uh, it's not going to make a lot of sense. You know, like it's not actually, they're not actually in a circle around him. There's a lot of stuff that's off camera that you don't see, but is implied. It's implied that there's stuff all around him. But because we don't really see that in the sketch, we don't really see that in the final artwork. We don't need to put that in a 3D scene. So this is, this, this bad guy character is just repeated like one two three four five six it's the same model repeated over and over and over again because i just need that silhouette and you're not really going to see their faces or anything like that you're just going to see their bodies so you don't really it doesn't matter if it's the same person but it does matter that they're all wearing the same kind of clothes because they're kind of part of the same thing all right so yeah you can see that the model is the same person over and over again it's ian hubert got it from his patreon these boxes and stuff are just free assets i found off of like cd cg trader or turbo squid and that's really it, you know, I just kind of made it to look like, like, it looks like just some kind of warehouse looking thing. I always kept looking at the left side of the screen to make sure everything within that box, within that composition was shown, and everything outside of it can, it doesn't matter. In the original sketch, there's the, kind of like these spotlights in the background and in, on the top, and those spotlights just kind of help separate things. They kind of separate, like, whatever's in front of the spotlight versus behind, and it adds, like, depth. And then there's just a bunch of atmosphere and fog. So really, that's all I was that's all I was paying attention to. I added these some of these extra spotlights in Blender because it's so fun to add lighting in 3D. Because once you bring it in and you start moving it around, the lighting will accurately, you know, work. And what you drew in the sketch, if you're like, do I want the background character like highlighted or not? You don't know. Oh hello, my cat just came in. Anyway, so just basically recreated that and try to match the lighting how I had it in the sketch. And then build it out from there. So that's the background part. And then the middle ground is where our main character is and we have this top, this spotlight directly on them, on their back. I want the light to be on their back, not like on their head. And that's another one of those things where when you're making it in 3D, um, if I put the light directly above him, it kind of shines like on the top of his head and makes his face a lot darker. But if I put the light behind him, it gives you a more accurate representation of what that would look like. It's like, okay, yeah, so it makes it more like a rim light, which is what I want, and not so much just flat light on top of his head. Since I'm going to be adding my own clothes and materials and stuff on top, it doesn't matter to me that it's not identical to the sketch. I just need the shape and the lighting information, which is the hardest part. I also have some lights around the arm to give it, like, to boost the colors a bit because it's glowing red. So I want some of that light touching the leg, touching the ground, and how is that supposed to look? So that gives me a lot of information. And then in the foreground where the camera is, in the immediate foreground, you have, like, these two bad guys that are kind of, like, framing the shot. And in the 3D scene, they're in the floor because I need them a specific height. And the perspective, you know, doesn't matter as much like with their height and everything like that because I just needed to 
help me with the sketch and the final. So the 3D scene doesn't have to be super duper accurate. And I posed them to kind of match the sketch. I knew I was going to put a crowbar on one of the guy's arm. So I kind of position their arms in shot so you can so I can Photoshop a crowbar in later. I also enabled like a thick volumetric fog that I put in with this volume box that you can see here basically. And that helped create a lot of that depth because there's rain, it's foggy, all that kind of stuff. Adding a volume box will just give you that information. So once I got the ground all wet and made it look like rain essentially, at least to give me the information that I want, the reflections and things like that, uh, I then rendered exactly what you see here and then brought that back into Photoshop. I wasn't able to find a Photoshop file in time of this video, but I'm just going to quickly walk through just essentially what I did. I left the render pretty much exactly as it is and then just added a little extra flair like with Photoshop brushes and smudges and things like that. So here's the original uh, like render exactly from Blender. Like there's this this concrete asphalt texture that I had um, had enabled. And then I rendered out a non-concrete texture so just to get that reflection and then that was for me to be able to composite those two things on top of each other and then cut them out and then i also rendered just the person separated on their own which allowed me to kind of like paint behind him and not have to worry about cutting him out and things like that and then the final turned out like this and i mean there's like stuff going on here but essentially what i did is i used the combination of the smudge brush and then various painting techniques that i've used in other videos to uh, accentuate certain parts or to obscure certain parts and um, that's really it I mean you can the, the biggest thing is that I want you to see um, this glass here like I got this from the reflection render that I did I just kind of cut out with the lasso tool like so then once I had that in I just kind of added some some drop shadow to it and painted over it and that's how I got the broken glass. There's a spotlight on them. That's in the original render. I kept that. A lot of the lighting information, the highlights, and all of these kind of spotlights and stuff. And you can really see there's not... The, the 3D is really helping a lot here. And it's filling in a lot of those blanks. I modeled a crowbar. And then I modeled this like little drone to add as additional content. But everything else, all the heavy lifting is really done by the 3D render. But yeah, I hope that was interesting and you got to see a little bit about how you can use 3D to help your 2D stuff. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.